is the video tutorial for Corey's SAS. It shows you how to put together the model. It is necessarily brief because we don't want to have a whole lot of tutorial time for you, um, but it should give you everything you need to help you construct the model. The assumption section, as you can see here, is organized according to sales assumption. That's the uh, orange section, income statement assumptions, assumptions, which are the blue section, balance sheet assumption, which are the yellow section, cash flow assumptions, which are the green section, and then finance parameters, which are, again, assumptions uh, in pink. The numbers are all filled out from the figures in the case. Uh, one thing to note here is that their fixed SG&A um, uh, increases by $200,000 a year per the case, and you'll see how that works into logic. Uh, the calculated section of this model um, simply takes uh, numbers from the assumptions with very few calculations. Direct sales is going to come from Corey's direct subscription sold. He thinks he's going to sell six, one a month for the first six, six months. Ads viewed per month, again, this logic is taken straight from the assumptions section. Um, 5000 a month, there's a click-through rate, a trial rate on click-throughs, and a subscription rate. And I'll show you how all those work into the assumptions, assumptions section here. Um, very briefly, here's the click-throughs, here's the trials, uh, here are the new subscriptions, which are incidentally zero in the first month because the case assumes that we have a one-month cycle uh, to close um, trials off of the web. So the logic in the F column relates to the E column. This is uh, intentional because we're giving ourselves a one-month lag in, the, uh, in bringing on new customers. Channel marketing is, sim is similar, uh, relates directly to an assumption. Uh, the number of new subscriptions, again, is zero in the first month and then relates to uh, a yield rate and the number of referrals, uh, allowing for a one month lag. Total new subscriptions sold are um, the sum of three previously calculated numbers. New subscription dropped are calculated every three months and it takes advantage of the modulus function here. Modulus, as you may recall, is what's left over after you divide one number by the other. So what this logic does is simply take the month number, in this case one, divide it by three, and if you have nothing left over, which you don't when you divide one by three, then you do the calculation. Uh, otherwise, the number is zero. And um, you can see here in the first two months, the number correctly is zero, and I think it is also zero in the third month because you don't have uh, 10 net subscriptions from which you could subtract 10% and still get a whole number. So uh, the net new subscriptions is uh, the sum of total new subscriptions sold plus uh, minus the drops, and the new subscription active simile. similarly are uh, a sum of uh, subscription drop, net new subscriptions, and the prior month's net subscriptions active because this net subscriptions active is a cumulative number. Revenues uh, simply monetize the number of net subscriptions active by multiplying them by the assumed annual revenue divided by 12, uh, making it a monthly revenue number. The variable cost of sales is, if I recall correctly, 10% of uh, revenues. Uh, not unusual for a SaaS model. Uh, fixed cost of sales, again, works directly off of an assumption. I believe it's 100,000. Yes, it is. Total cost of sales, simply the sum of those, gross margin, the sum uh, revenue by a cost of sales. Uh, variable SGNA is, is only slightly complicated because there are a number of elements that contribute to it. All of them come off of the uh, assumptions. Uh, there's an internal sales commission, a web marketing cost per click. You have to calculate the number of clicks, and the sales commission to the channel. So, channel sales, 35% um, of channel sales have to be calculated in this, and this is the logic that allows you to do all that. Since we have no revenue, it's not, not surprising, almost no revenue, it's not surprising that variable SGA doesn't register. Um, fixed SGNA again, is a fixed number and increases uh, by 200,000 a month, and this is how it captures that. Um, if the month, if the month that we are currently in, in other words, if uh, this month is month number one or January, then you increase it 
uh, then you increase the fixed cost. Otherwise, you keep fixed costs at what they were in the previous month. Um, total SG&A, again, is a sum. Operating profit is a sum. Tax expense is fairly simple. Uh, it's operating profit times the negative assumed tax rate, which in this case is 40%. But there is a complicated tax logic, which is described in some detail in an appendix to the case, which is provided and calculated for you here in the model. And um, I won't go into explaining it because it's covered in some detail in the appendix. That income then is operating profit minus tax expense. Uh, as you can imagine, tax expense uh, is recorded as a, neg in this case, a negative number since expense would ordinarily be a negative number. So it looks like we're getting $200,000 from the government. We, in fact, are not. And we handle that using the tax logic uh, in the cash flow statement. And we'll show you how that works in a minute. Uh, the balance sheet is, again, fairly simple. In this case, uh, we're, we have, we've hardwired it in, $600,000 in the cash, uh, no receivables or, or at fixed assets yet. Uh, for total assets, which is the sum of, of the above, uh, no accounts payable yet, defer, no deferred tax liability. The uh, convertible debt is taken off of the assumption, which again is up here. There's a $250,000 note, uh, convertible note, I should say. Uh, it rounds to only one decimal, so it looks like $300,000. And the equity is simply uh, the sum, the plug figure, which makes liabilities, equity, and assets equal each other. So we start off equaling, and if this model is properly constructed, it, the assets and liabilities plus equity should balance in every month. Uh, cash calculation, again, is fairly simple. It's cash in the prior period. Let me show you where that is. Cash in the prior period plus the increase in the cash account. Here's the cash flow statement, which we're about to ca calculate. Here's the uh, increase or decrease in cash. And in this case, because you're going to raise $5 million in the next month, Cash will increase by that. Accounts receivable um, uh, is fairly restricted. We've allowed ourselves to have one month or two months of accounts, accounts receivable in the assumptions. And you can see here that uh, if the number is one month, you simply sum the prior month. If the number is two months of receivables, then you, uh, then you simply sum the two prior months. Otherwise, the, uh, you'll, this logic will return an error message and you'll have to do something else. Net fixed assets are simply the prior period balance plus numbers off the income statement, or the cash flow statement, sorry, in this case, deferred tax and capital expenditures. Total assets are the sum of the above. Accounts payable uh, work very much like accounts receivable, except in this logic only allows for a one month worth of payables. If you assume anything else, you'll get an error message. Uh, deferred tax liability comes straight off of the logic, and uh, the tax logic which is provided, uh, it is the sum of deferred tax expense of this month plus the prior month. Um, convertible debt, uh, which started at $250,000 last year, in the first month uh, flips over to preferred, so the balance of convertible debt disappears, and the logic for that, again, is fairly simple. If it says that if this month is equal to the month that's in the assumption for conversion, which it is, the first month, uh, then, uh, then the number is zero. Otherwise, it's the amount of the prior month. Uh, equity is uh, simply the uh, combination of a number of things, principally the prior month equity, uh, any equity raised, uh, which is coming up here, any cash dividends paid, which are always negative and which are always zero in this model, uh, and um, any increase or decrease in convertible debt. Uh, total liabilities and equity then equal each other, e equal total assets in the first month as they do in the second month. So it looks like this model uh, is fairly robust from the perspective of a projected balance sheet. The cash flow statement has income that comes straight off the, uh, off the income statement. It has depreciation, in this case of zero, because we don't start depreciating until later, uh, the sixth month. And a deferred tax expense of um, that, that again comes off of the logic um, that is provided for you for taxes and is explained in the um, in the appendix. Cash from ops is the sum of all the above. 
Capital expenditures, again, come straight off the assumptions. Increase in working capital, you're looking here at the uh, working capital for this year, which is uh, accounts receivable minus accounts payable, less the working capital for last year, which is receivables minus payables. And that difference is recorded as the increase or decrease in working capital. Uh, cash to ops, then, is the sum of capital expenditures and working capital increases. Uh, and this is uh, the rest of this is provided for thoroughness. Equity financing raised is uh, works off of the assumption logic. That is, if we are in the month, D3, where uh, the Series A, or the Series B in this case, is um, assumed to occur, then take the balance of the amount that is being raised. Uh, otherwise, the number is zero. And that is uh, what that logic boils down to. There's never any debt financing. That's always zero. Total financing is then all sources, which in this case must always be equity. Uh, no debt is ever repaid, so that is always a zero. Cash dividends are never paid in this model, so that is also zero. There will never be financing sources payments, but it is provided so that we have a complete model. And the increase or decrease in cash is simply the sum of cash from ops, cash to ops, financing raised, and financing payments. Uh, this covers the, uh, pr the um, production of the model. You can simply, you should be able to simply take every one of these items, uh, copy them, control C, uh, and then shift right arrow, copy them forward for 60 months. And if you do that with every single item on this on projection, uh, you should have what you're looking for. Um, I will leave it to you to figure out how to combine individual 12 months, but that is not a difficult thing. I will, uh, I will show you one item off of the cash flow statement. We alluded earlier to the fact that depreciation is calculated at zero. So I'm going to show you how I would do that. Um, again, we don't have all the items filled out, but the, we're going to look here specifically at depreciation. We're going to go out to the six month because assets uh, are simply the depreciated assets. We're going to assume straight line here. We're simply going to take the amount of net fixed assets in that year, which we haven't calculated here, divide it by the assumed um, depreciation number of months and show that as the deferred tax expense. If you then, excuse me, as, as the depreciation, then if you simply copy that forward starting in the six month, you should be good. Um, that concludes the financing, um, the financial projection section. The next video will cover some of the financing elements and the return calculations, and then you will have a fully functioning monthly model and um, be able to answer some of the questions.